Welcome to Snack Time Chats, a collection of short, podcast-style recordings designed to promote best practice and encourage knowledge exchange throughout the ELC sector. Each session will be led by the Improvement Service, who will be joined by a different guest speaker for each recording. Research shows that families who undertake a significant amount of hands-on caring bond more quickly with their babies and are likely to enjoy fatherhood more. A father's positive involvement is key to many aspects of children's educational, social and emotional development. Now I am delighted to be joined by Chris and Cathy from Fathers Network Scotland. Thank you both very much for, for joining me today. Now, some people listening to this may not be familiar with Fathers Network Scotland. So Chris, I wonder if you could start just by giving us a little bit of insight into your organisation. Okay, no problem. Yeah, well, Fathers Network Scotland, we're a small organisation that we, we, we cover the whole of Scotland. Um, and essentially, our charity, um, we exist um, with the main aim of improving the lives of children and families. Um, and our, our, our focus is on how the positive involvement of uh, dads, father figures and the whole family um, uh, how that positive involvement can impact and improve uh, on children's lives and families' lives. Um, so I suppose in terms of what we do exactly, well, I mean, we, 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 we have a great online resource on our website where we give information, signposting and support um, for, for, for not just dads, but mums too, and for um, organisations that uh, help uh, outline um, uh, where people can access the kind of support they need or information that they want to help them parent or to support parents. We do a lot of work with uh, organisations like schools, nurseries, health visitors, midwives, social workers, all sorts of people, helping them think about how their organisations can become more father and more partner friendly, how they they, they can become more inclusive of the whole family. Um, And uh, we do uh, collect a lot of the research that's out there, it's really important for us that all of the work that we do, none of it's based on the opinions of people in our team or colleagues or points of view. It's all based on the evidence, the the research base that's out there. We collect as much as we can, we analyse it, and then we try and use that evidence base to kind of you know share the messages that we're getting from the evidence about why it's important to involve dads and partners and how we can best do that. And we do a bit of our own evidence, uh, sort of researching ourselves. Um, we talk to dads. Um, since COVID came along, we've had a six month survey where we ask dads and partners um, about various, various aspects of their lives, about how it is for them to be a dad, to be a parent, obviously during COVID, how COVID's impacted on that um, and so on. So I suppose essentially, I hope I've not missed anything, but that's pretty much what we do. That's great. Thank you very much. That was a really thorough, really thorough overview. Um, I think this is a good time, I suppose, to highlight the biological differences between mum and dad, particularly when it comes to play and the importance of dad's involvement in the early years. So, Cathy, I wonder if you would maybe like to talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. So this is all fairly new to me, actually, and um, it's as a result of listening to uh, or or having Anna Mackin along to one of our Dad X talks. Um, she's a researcher uh, who, until recently, worked at uh, Oxford Brookes University in um, uh, in quite a reasonably famous lab. So she's a psychologist, and and um, as a result of of her own experiences of becoming a mum and obviously um, her partner becoming a father, she decided to look at the research around dads. And and she wrote this book uh, called The Life of Dad, The Making of the Modern Father. And I I have to say that I bought it over Christmas and read it cover to cover. And it's a really fascinating read. I think if you've got a little spare time, it's really readable and really interesting. Um, But part of the book that um, she talks about the differences, the biological differences um, between uh, men and women. And she she starts off by talking about the 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 differences or what happens to men as uh, as women go through pregnancy. So I think there's a sort of there's a a myth really around the fact that men are kind of are just watching our, our onlookers during pregnancy and then. 
uh, things start happening for them at the birth, but that's actually not quite the case. So there are biological differences or there are biological changes that happen in men hormonally during the pregnancy if you're in contact with a pregnant lady. So if you're if you're in a parenting couple, then you start to change as, as a man. Um, you your your hormonal you you start to hormonally mimic the pregnant woman, which is utterly fascinating. And I think it's all fairly new science, to be honest. Um, and when uh, just at the time of the birth, the testosterone levels drop in men as well. So actually, there's a significant biological change. So not only are the circumstances around those two individuals changing as they're bringing a new child into the world, biologically, they're both actually changing, which to me was was news. And it's it's really interesting. But dads and mums, in her book, she talks about the difference between um, the way that dads and mums interact with children, certainly in the early years. And obviously, the mother is uh, very much the centre of the child world to begin with. Um, so she's feeding and nurturing that child. And I think that dad, certainly for the, the first six months, can feel a little bit of a sideshow during that period. Um, but... Uh, Dads sort of come into their own when the children are starting to get more involved in the world. And so where the mother is the nurturer, so the child is being held into her, into the mother. What the dads tend to do is turn the child out into the world and start to help the child explore in the world. And um, she she talks about the fact that, that fathers are really key in helping children aim for for goals so whether it's you know the first steps the dad will encourage the the child to take the first steps or you know encourage those kind of developmental goals and it's a, a real it, it, it's quite a different um behavioral characteristic between um fathers and mothers and there are differences and and the book goes into quite a lot of detail about that but it's absolutely fascinating. So there, there are these these two different roles, but they're absolutely sympathetic. So you know that um, the mother is that kind of nurturing, caring role, and the the father is kind of turning the child out. And of course, you know there's variation. So you 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 know you, there's variations along those themes, and um, you know we're not all the same. But in general terms, we've kind of evolved into this place where we've got these sort of these these uh, mutually beneficial roles. That's absolutely fascinating. I, I can't, I can't uh, encourage you to read it enough, actually. So that, that is really, really interesting. And it's definitely a book that we'll, we'll put a little um, link to on, on the, the slide um, that goes along with this, because I'm sure a lot of, of people who have had, have had children themselves will, will resonate with that. And it is, it is a very accurate description of what happens through that pregnancy birth in the first couple of months with a newborn so there's lots of really interesting little nuggets of information in there that we can take some learning from so I suppose the big question really is why do dads matter in in early years and in um, early learning and child care um, settings and how we would support them in that okay um well I suppose um I'm going to go back uh to the turn of the century um and the year 2000 three big studies took place in the uk one of them was called the millennial cohort study i can't quite rem remember the name of the other two but th these were macro studies that were done in the uk where thousands of children that were born at the turn of the century um there the, the, we these studies collected information about these children so what their familial and socio-economic circumstances were at the time of birth and then those children have been getting followed all the way into adulthood. And the idea is that these studies will stop once these young adults become 25 years old. So they'll all be about 22 or thereabouts at the moment. And a lot of them are still involved in taking part in this study. And one of the things that the study looked at when those children were in their sort of mid-teens was um, they looked at how well they were doing in various aspects of their life. And what the... Um, well, one of the main purposes of, of the study is to try and, I suppose, um, find out what uh, is happening with a child's life at the very early stages and how that can predict how they might do later on in life. And one of the things they looked at was um, for the children who had a supportive father figure in their very early years, what, did, what, what were you likely to see in 15 or 6 years' time in terms of uh, 
how that ch child was doing uh, as a young teenager in every aspect of their life. So for children who um, had a supportive father, the findings were, were uh, pretty um, clear that those children tended to do better in all aspects that the studies were measuring. So they tended to have, for example, better friendships uh, at school. They had fewer behavioural problems uh, at school and in the community. Um, they were less involved in things like criminality, substance abuse. They tended to do better um, in their exams. You know, th th their attainment rates were higher. Their mental health outcomes were much better. Um, they actually measured those children to have a greater capacity for empathy amongst their peers. Um, and they all reported a, a, a higher incidence of uh, positive self-esteem and life satisfaction. So essentially what these studies have told us, what these big studies have told us, is that having a supportive father figure in the very earliest years makes it much more likely that a child in 14, 15 years time will be um, achieving the kind of outcomes that we hope he or she will achieve by that stage in their life. It's not to say that if a child doesn't have that supportive father figure, they won't do well in life. Of course, that's not the case. What we're saying is that it's much more likely. So father involvement in the early years is a really good way, a really important way to help kind of secure these positive outcomes for the children that we are working with at this early stage. And if we're not engaging with fathers, if they're not involved in our service delivery, but they're around somewhere, then we're really missing a trick. Um, and the other thing I suppose to say is that it's not just about outcomes for children, obviously. Um, our, our, our early year services, we tend to engage far more with mums than we do with dads. And that's great in a sense for the mums in terms of how they're engaged by our services. But what it also means is that, as well as not including dads, we're putting all of the onus and all of the focus um, on the mum, which can be a burden. And uh, in, a, in a sense, what we really want to do is uh, encourage mums and dads where possible to work together to, uh, as a family to support the child that they're trying to raise. And we've got a big role to play there in our kind of uh, early year settings to, to encourage that involvement. So in terms of the positives, um, we could go on all day talking about some specifics um, or getting a deeper dive into those specifics that I've mentioned, but essentially, Getting a dad or a partner involved in an early year setting at the very early years helps prepare that child far better for those positive outcomes that we're hoping that he or she will reach in years to come. So it has a lifelong impact and that's why it's so important. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I 100% agree and that I think leads on very nicely, I suppose, to my next question of what can local authorities and even taking it down to individual ELC settings do to support this more and what can they do to be more inclusive of dads and to look at dads as an equal contributor to child raising from those very early early days? Well, um, I think that uh, it's a very big question. Um, we're talking about essentially a, a changing culture in terms of how our local authority and third sector support organisations and indeed health services work with families in the early years. Um, and also it's a shift in culture in terms of how parents and families um, uh, engage with their services. Um, but there are, the truth of the matter is, we can make some very big changes, uh, sorry, we, we can have very big impact through some relatively small and simple changes. Um, we can think about our service delivery in terms of, for example, the systems and processes that we have. Um, what kind of information do we collect on parents? What sort of information don't we collect? Which parent do we communicate with? Are there parents or key parenting figures that we don't systematically communicate or engage with? What about the environment? How does that environment talk to each parent? Um, does it? What message do we give um, in terms of uh, our nursery setting or whatever it happens to be to the different types of parents that we want to engage, not just mums, I suppose? Um, and in terms of activity as well, what do we do with our parents? Um, do we need to think a little bit more about how we can tweak or tailor some of our activity so that it's a bit more inclusive and talks a bit more maybe to dads or to men as well as just to mums? Now, um, we can, I suppose, local authority can, we, we can look at policy, we can look at how we measure what we do against, uh, for example, things like the engagement of fathers and partners and so on. 
But ultimately, it's really about what happens in the front line. Um, uh, the thousands of staff that are operating in the front line in any local authority, these are the people who are engaging with children and these are the people who are engaging with parents. And these are the very people, who, they're the only ones that can make that difference. So they need to be given the time and the space to consider this issue, to reflect on this issue, to, to relate it to, to their own practice. And in my experience, having worked as part of uh, a local authority education uh, department uh, a few years ago where we started this work, um, and, and, and it's, it's, it's the same across the whole of Scotland. Our early years in education services tend to be a sort of a female dominated workforce. Um, and we tend to be, think sometimes that we are we are a, a, a sort of profession which is um, female oriented that's good at engaging with other women. Um, and I would argue that that's not the case. Um, essentially, what mums need, what women need from us as service, uh, service uh, deliverers is no different from what dads need. Um, we, mums and dads both need that direct communication. They need to be invited directly. They need to be spoken to directly. We need to help them think about them as an individual and their involvement. And how do we do that? Um, I suppose some simple changes would be looking at things, well, such as how do we communicate with parents? So if a system is set up whereby we only have the communication with what would normally be called the main carer, for example, and then we have another parent, maybe on a form or something, which is more often than not the dad. Um, does that system help or hinder us engage the other parent? Probably not. Um, and so it's really up to us to make sure that our systems um, respond to what we need in terms of trying to engage parents as, a, as, a, as, a, as opposed to us being confined by the systems that we have. Even simple things such as when schools send out text messages, for example, how they share information with parents, it's really important to direct information to every parent within that, uh, uh, within the sort of family bubble that a child uh, comes along with. I suppose one of the expressions that we use is that um, it's not up to us as services to decide who the family around the child is, but sometimes our practice and sometimes our systems do tend to decide who that family is by probably unintentionally ignoring other key parenting figures or leaving them out. What we need to do is determine who that family is, which is sometimes easier said than done, especially when maybe there's been a separation or a mum's on her own or something like that. So we really need to find out who these key family uh, members are, who these key parenting figures are, and then think about engaging them um, directly. In terms of um, activity, in terms of what we do, in terms of how we do it, I would say that the kind of human element for dads is just the same as mums. It's about that communication. It's about reaching out to dads specifically. Um, you might want to think about how you can um, uh, uh, just just include both parents or any parent that's involved in a child's life. But sometimes you might want to think about things that are a little bit um, better suited to engaging dads or men, perhaps. So we often think about how do we get dads involved in maybe a group that we're running or maybe we do a parenting class or something like that. Or maybe we want him to talk about something to do with the nursery. Maybe we need to flip that on its head and think, well, what can what can these parents bring to us? How can we um, think about what they can bring to a nursery setting, for instance, um, in terms of their own skills, their own experience, their own knowledge? What assets do the parents have that we can kind of tap into? And by flipping the conversation on its head that way, rather than, um, I suppose, seeking to do to families or parents were seeking to do with them and were seeking to be led by them. So it's really about um, the stuff that we all know, the basics. It's about that very person-centered approach, but thinking about how every parent responds in, in, in their own individual way to the messages um, and, and to the processes and procedures that we have in place to, to, to engage parents. They, they all need to be tweaked and tailored so that every parent really um, is, is, is drawn in that way. There are other things as well. There are lots of barriers around why dads don't engage. So, for example, working with schools and nurseries over the years, dads' perceptions is a big issue. Dads will often um, perceive, for example, that it's not for me. So, I mean, I work for an organisation called Fathers Network Scotland, so I should know better, but I've been guilty of taking the letter out of the school bag and passing it to my wife, and then gently being handed it back and reminded that you know that you work for an organisation called Fathers Network Scotland, and this is what you teach people not to do, apparently. So we all slip into these kind of cultural stereotypes, you know, 
and um, we're all guilty of it to a greater or lesser extent. So we need to kind of try and challenge those perceptions that, that, that a lot of dads have and, and, and possibly a lot of mums do have as well. As I mentioned, it's great for mums who want to engage, but also it's a burden for them too sometimes. So we need to be um, helping them understand how the involvement of a father can really have that uh, uh, and positive influence on their child's learning. Um, so yeah, I mean, I suppose I could go on all day about the little things that we could do. I don't know if, if it's if it's helpful to go through any of them in particular at the moment, or I've said enough. I probably said too much. No, not at all. You've given people lots to think about. Um, now I know Fathers Network Scotland have done some work with um, some local authorities already in Scotland, and I wonder, Cathy, if you would maybe want to expand on that a little bit and what that research looked like and what some of the the outputs of that were and some of the positive results of that were. Of course, yeah. Um, so I think we're we're talking about the East Lothian Schools Project, um, which started way back in 2015, believe it or not. Um, and it started really with a discussion between a dad and a head teacher. It's really that simple. And the dad actually happened to be a family worker. Um, and he had noticed how fantastically well the school were at involving dads in the school. He's like, what is it that you do that makes you so brilliant at involving dads? You know, there's all these dads coming to the school and they're really actively involved. What is it that you're doing well? And and the head teacher's like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not too sure. And the whole project really was centered around this uh, sort of glowing example of best practice and trying to unpick and unravel what it is that this particular school was doing well. Um, and so uh, I'm sure that you can share uh, videos and, and information around this project. But really, the project started in earnest in 2016, and it was a parental engagement project. Um, first off with this particular school, which is pri um, Preston Pan's Infant and Primary School in East Lothian. And it was uh, it's in an area of reasonable deprivation. So, you know, there's there's all sorts of kids coming and going into the school. Wasn't a particularly privileged background where you 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 might see more father involvement. That wasn't the case. And the head teacher and uh, some of the other teachers got together and worked with um, a researcher at Edinburgh University to try and understand some of some of um, the aspects of what they were getting right. So they talked to the teachers and um, they talked to the head teachers. So the whole school staff, they also talked to the dads and the other parents who are attending the school to kind of unpick all these various different aspects of what made them so good. And this resulted in a report being drawn up, I think, in 2017, so um, which you can find on our website, and no doubt you'll have links to that, showing the outcomes of, um, of, of this research project from Emory University. And it's quite a lengthy document, but there's also a summary document that shows some of the barriers that Chris has been talking about, so the barriers for dads coming into the school and also ways in which you can mitigate that. So it's kind of looking at things like uh, dads tend to be working during the school day. So how do you mitigate that? How do you how do you get them involved out of hours where they might be able to join in more? Um, if they're a bit shy in coming over um, over the school gates, how do you encourage people? You know, how is it that you just encourage someone just to come you know, come into the school and be part of it. How do you change the, um, how do you change your environment? How do you make dads feel welcome, you know, through knowing their names, knowing, you know, understanding their family situations, all that kind of stuff. And there's a fantastic video, it's a really short video, I think it's five minutes, that goes through the school project and it highlights Alison Cameron, who's the head teacher or who's the acting head teacher at Preston Pans during that time. And I implore you to watch it and you'll, you'll get the information directly from the, the horse's mouth. Um, but as a result of this project, um, Alison and her team and Geetik, um, who is a researcher on the project, developed a practical guide for a father inclusive practice, which again, you can download from our website and it provides um, some helpful advice if you want to improve um, your father inclusivity in a school. But to be honest with you, it's most of the work is 
equally as applicable in nursery settings. I don't think there's a huge amount of difference, to be honest. Um, that's a really, really great place to start. So um, there's some practical tips and also the, the research, um, the findings from, uh, from the studies are also available online. And um, as a follow on piece of research, so this started back in 2015 with a simple question. And then we went through the first, this first big project. And then there was a follow on project. So the idea was then, so this guidebook that was created was then um, sort of filtered out to other pri primary schools in the area. And they undertook this process of trying to become more dad friendly. And the piece of research fed, it, it sort of followed that that process of being rolled out, this pilot project being rolled out, and again, um, looked at what the successes were and top tips and all that kind of stuff. So the research is really, really useful, actually. If you want to make a difference, you want to get dads involved in your practice, uh, it's a great place to start. And there's some really fantastic um, guides and summary documents to help you on your journey. That's great. Thank you so much. There's been a real wealth of information and really good knowledge um, highlighted today and absolutely we will we'll signpost to to the research materials you're talking about Cathy um, that's not a problem at all we would also like to include some contact details for yeah. your organization if any of our ELC leads at local authority level or in fact individual settings want to reach out and find out a little bit more about your organization and what what they can do to work with dads then um, I think you two would be very good contacts for them <laughs> to have so um, just a, a huge thank you from from me for your time today it's been a real pleasure talking to you and it's it's an area that I am really keen to find out more about and I'm sure there are so many other people as well who are just looking to to kind of broaden their knowledge of what we can do to, to bring dads into this wonderful journey that is early years and how we can really um, um, involve them in, in young people's um, early, early years. So yeah, just a huge thank you from me. If there's anything else you want to, to contribute, please feel free to do so. Um, it's the, the one thing that I haven't probably, that we haven't touched on is just the effect of the pandemic actually. <laughs> and I think probably one of the, the the biggest positives to come out of what's been, you know, a fairly awful couple of years is that for the first time, probably since the Industrial Revolution, dads came back into the family home during lockdown and that had a profound effect on them. Um, and as as Chris said, we do we do surveys uh, every year and during the pandemic, we've been doing them every six months because it's been such a rapidly changing um, environment, such a rapidly changing landscape around family life. And what we found is that that seismic shift in family life, I think, or it seems to be having quite a profound long term effect. So dads came home during that first lockdown and they realised what they were missing out on and they wanted to be more involved with their children's lives. And they want to continue to be part of their children's lives. They want to be more involved. And we're being presented with a golden golden opportunity at the moment to engage dads. They want to be there. They want to be involved in school settings. They want to be involved um, in nursery settings. They want to be there for their kids. Um, and so if you if you want dads to get involved, there's been never been a better time. <laughs> there really hasn't. So uh, yeah, I encourage you, you all to to um, to have a go. You know, as Chris said, there's some really small changes that you can make that will make a, a huge difference. Actually, really simple, really and, simple changes. And just yeah, just just one other thing off uh, the back of that, and I'll get invite to share our details. Yeah, we're more than happy to talk to anybody. Um, we have trained. I don't know. It must be. A couple of thousand staff now, Kathy, in the last three years or so, uh, uh, a course called Understanding Dad, which kind of it was designed when I worked with Faith Council, uh, and it, it was initially targeted to to um, early year staff to, to to give those early year staff the the time and the space to consider the evidence that was spoken about, and to kind of challenge themselves, you know, to think about well, we know how important it is to include dads, but What's stopping us? What are the barriers? And to try and be upfront about what some of these barriers are, but then ultimately to 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 take each of these barriers and turn and think what are is well let's let's turn them into challenges that we that we can maybe not 
you know, um, solve overnight, but we can begin to take a step here or there towards um, uh, uh, doing some improvement work around that or, or making small changes. Um, so that course was called Understanding Dad, and we're still doing it um, because uh, essentially the, 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 uh, the crux of the training is that you'll walk away having identified at least one small change that you'll make to your practice, even if it's in your thinking, even if it's in the language that you use, one small change that will make your practice more father inclusive and that ultimately will help your staff feel more confident, more able to engage um, with the dads and the partners that maybe they're not currently engaging as much as they would like to. And uh, so we're happy to talk to anybody about how we can come along and deliver that training with your staff, either online or you never know, in person, maybe maybe once it gets a bit sunnier, we can do it out in the school playground or something, you know. That's great. Thank you so much. And I suppose that is one positive that we can sort of take from lockdown. And as much as there's been some real challenges and it's been really difficult and people have had some really bumpy rides with caring for children and trying to work. And I think we can all speak to the challenges that brings, but actually to be able to see the total shift in culture and involving dad um, and bringing dad back into the home um, during the day it has been a real positive we can take from that. So that was that was great final notes thank you so much for your contributions um and yeah we'll certainly signpost um all of the details you've mentioned on on our slide pack and we'll make sure your contact details are included as well so thank you so much thank yeah. you thank you it's been great yeah thanks thank you for listening if you have any questions about the topics discussed in this recording or if you're interested in taking part in the series please do not hesitate to get in touch more details and contact information can be found on the Improvement Service website.